assalamu alaikum fcps part 2 exam is approaching and uh, since exam is very close so many students they contact me and they said that we want some sessions on training for fcps part 2 exam uh, in this time of covid uh, it's practically not possible to move everywhere and do it physically so inshallah i will try that i will upload some of the mock vivas for short cases and long cases which will help fcps part 2 preparation exam so thank you very much this uh, this video is about a mock viva in which a training session is going on for how to present a long case thank you please present your case sir this is a 25 year male and uh, he is a student he presented to us with complaint of multiple swellings in the neck right and uh, on examination the the swellings are in uh, the area of uh, cervical region and bilateral cervical region and uh, on inspection there were no scars and uh, no skin changes and uh, on palpation the swellings were firm in consistency and they were matted all together right. and uh, <coughs> on further examination uh, I examined the axilla and there were no axillary radiopathy I also examined the inguinal area which was inconclusive and uh, on abdominal examination, I couldn't. Uh, I was not able to palpate the liver spleen. Right. And on further examination, uh, I checked out the uh, draining areas like nose, ear, and uh, mouth, and uh, it was insignificant. Right. And uh, okay. So uh, are they tender? They are non-tender. Okay. But they are uh, matted together. They are firm. Okay, so what's the importance of lymph nodes being tender? Uh, if, if they are tender, it can be any abscess and uh, it can be a uh, tuberculous abscess. Uh, so, do, so are you saying the tubercular abscess is tender? Uh, is tubercular abscess tender? It can be. Uh, can it be tender? If, 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 if it has inflammatory signs, then it can be. Do we have inflammatory signs on the birth um, no. so, so why are you saying that they are tender? So if lymph nodes are tender, what does that mean? Lymphadenitis. Which be. means what? Can be. Which means it's an inflammatory pathology. Right? It's an inflammatory pathology. So what is the name of the abscess when it is because of tuberculosis? Cold abscess. Why it is called cold abscess? Because it does not include any signs of inflammation, it is not tender. Okay. And so in this case, what is your differential diagnosis? Sir, in my opinion, that diagnosis uh, which I made is that uh, it can be tuberculosis. However, I will rely on the histopathological. So why, why tuberculosis is your first diagnosis? Uh, sir, in our area, usually the endemic areas, tuberculosis is very common mm -hmm. and uh, apart from that, the lymph nodes are matted. Okay. It can be lymphoma, but in lymphoma, the lymph, nod lymph nodes are usually discreet. Okay. And uh, How will you confirm the diagnosis? Sir, uh, after taking the proper history, I uh, go for the some routine investigation, which okay. I will complete with ESR. Okay. And, uh, uh, other systemic investigations like RFTs, LFTs. Why do you need RFTs and LFTs? Just basic investigations. But why we need basic investigations? Why we need basic investigations? Because they cost money. So is there any purpose behind it? I'm not saying that you don't no, know. Generally, it. generally. Uh, but there has to be a purpose behind it. What's the purpose? Okay. What other investigations would you like to do? Apart from know? basic uh, investigation, I go for the FNAC. Okay. And uh, if FNAC is not inclusive, then I will go for the excisional biopsy. Okay. So in tuberculosis, what do you expect under the microscope? So in tuberculosis, uh, uh, the, uh, in the report, we have the epithelioid cell, the giant cell. Okay. Which are, uh, okay. If report is tuberculosis, then what will be the management policy? Sir, we'll start immediately ATP, okay. antitubercular therapy. Okay. Can you name the drugs? Sir, uh, for two months, we give the myelin B4, uh, 
this is the brand name, but what do you think? If, if, if the price is of uh, isonizer, mm -hmm. pyrazinamide, mm -hmm. uh, rifampicin, mm -hmm. and uh, ethambutol. Okay. For how many uh, months? For two months. Okay. Uh, then we will shift uh, the uh, drug to myelin P. Yeah. But these are brand names. I'm not if someone is uh, in UK, maybe there are some other drugs. So, uh, so brand names, yeah. yeah. Uh, isomerizer mm -hmm. and uh, so you mean you will be giving five drugs to start with and yes. then three. Uh, so what instruction you will give to the patient when you prescribe say the five drugs to the patient uh, actually these all uh, drugs uh, they are renal toxic and hepatotoxic right. and uh, some of the drugs have these special uh, side effects like uh, isomerizer it has the it causes peripheral neuropathy okay. and erythempicin causes the uh, change in the urine color mm -hmm. and uh, pyrazinamide causes gout. Okay. And so what will you say, if God forbid I am the patient, what will be your instructions to me? Uh, I'll, uh, I'll tell you that uh, if you have any kind of uh, change in your vision, mm -hmm. because some uh, ethambutol was optic neuritis. Mm -hmm. So uh, please consult any uh, you know ophthalmologist. Okay. And uh, ophthalmologist, or he should come back to you. First, he should come. <laughs> he should okay. come back. Okay. 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 Then. And uh, and regarding the hepatotoxic uh, toxicity, patient can also develop jaundice. Okay. So uh, if she uh, if he gets uh, and with I N H and with I N H. And with INH, uh, if he gets numbness or... Uh, okay. Okay. So this was one, you know, if it is tuberculosis. What is the other differential diagnosis in this case? Yeah, it can be, it can be lymphoma, it can How will you sir, confirm it? Uh, sir, uh, first of all, uh, the same uh, matter like biopsy. Okay, what will you see under microscope if it is a lymphoma? Lymphoid cells and... Uh, if we are talking about Hodgkin and non Hodgkin lymphoma, then in Hodgkin lymphoma, we will see the leads and oh, Okay, okay, fine. So, what is the difference between Hodgkin and non Hodgkin lymphoma? Sir, uh, there is an age difference. Okay. And uh, the Hodgkin lymphoma, it usually uh, involves the systemic uh, system. Hodgkin? You mean it involves liver? It involves stomach? Yes. Hodgkin? Yes. And non Hodgkin? I'm not sure exactly. Uh, Have you seen a patient of Hodgkin lymphoma? Uh, I I have seen it, but I don't. So, what is the typical typical presentation of Hodgkin lymphoma? Yes, it presents with the abdominal lymphadenopathy along with cervical lymphoma. Okay, fine. Okay, so how will you treat a uh, patient of lymphoma? Sir, uh, treatment depends upon the stage. Okay, the stage the patient. Uh, Did you remember the staging? Uh, a little bit. I know that stage four it crosses the diaphragm, and uh, stage two there are ipsilateral. Uh, stage one there are ipsilateral uh, supraclavicular lymph nodes, and uh, in stage two. Uh, All right. Okay, but in this case you will give a little bit Yes. So what will be the follow up? When will you call call him back? Uh, first, initially after uh, two months. Then followed by uh, we have to change the regime. So okay, thank you very much. So so your viva is over. Now since it's a mock viva and we are getting a practice session and your exam is many months away, let's now reflect. And this is also for all our students who are just watching it online or uh, on YouTube or Facebook. Reflect yourself. What was you, how was your viva? Will you pass yourself or you will not for an FCPS part two exam? I think uh, I'm uh, I'm weak in my core knowledge. Okay. And uh, I need to focus more on that. So, what do you think about it? What was the area where you think you were weak? Uh, there were certain things like uh, staging, uh, staging of the uh, lymphoma. The most important thing was you write the first point was core knowledge. See, the first first point was that you actually said totally opposite. Hodgkin lymphoma is discrete, it involves one chain, then another chain, then a continuous chain, then another chain, and then another chain. And non Hodgkin lymphoma is one which has got a systemic manifestation. You will find one lymph node here, and then a stomach may be involved. And see, examiner did not give you any impression. He just gave you a hint. He said, okay, really, what does that mean? That means that you, it gave you a chance to correct yourself. But actually, you did not pick the point. 
right? This one. And secondly, you remember any other point you think where apart from this core knowledge? Obviously, you have got few months for the exam. In fact, so this core knowledge needs to be so in part two exam. This is not acceptable that you confuse non-Hodgkin lymphoma with Hodgkin lymphoma. Say other way around, mm -hmm. right? Similarly, staging. I know a little bit of staging. This is not a good answer for part two. You have to be very sure about it. Stage one is this. Stage two is this. And actually, what you said was right. Mm -hmm. But there was no need of saying that we I know a little bit. Why you say I know a little bit? Right? Okay. Any other areas? Any feedback before I give or ask Hiram to give you? You know? I think overall it was really good, but at first he got confused with the he, he got confused with the with the abscess actually, mm -hmm. and uh, sir already took you there, and a few deficiencies were there, but you plucked them out. Right. So for for me being an examiner, an examiner for the last so many years, that was the critical decision point, and at that time examiner decided mm -hmm. that most likely his preparation is not up to mark mm -hmm. because. The differential diagnosis of cervical lymph node is inflammatory reasons, mm -hmm. chronic inflammation, which is tuberculosis, malignancies, which are lymphomas, which can be Hodgkin lymphoma, and secondary. Second. But your presentation did not mention a single word about secondary. Mm -hmm. And when I said that it is tender, mm -hmm. you said it may be uh, collapses. No, this is mm -hmm. sorry in Urdu as the bonga answer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Saying that means you have no concept about. So an examiner does not accept that. So answer would have been only if it is tender, then the causes are inflammatory. This should be the only answer. But say tuberculosis may be tender. Now that what does that mean? Why tuberculosis will be tender unless until there is a secondary infection? It's a rare thing. So that was one very critical point where examiner and here since we are having a mock viva and we were recording it as well, so I continued it. Otherwise, in a real exam, examiner will not let you move from there. And he will try to just convince you that he is failing you because you are not up to mark. Mm. So, so in, if you don't know, it's simple. There are inflammatory causes. Though answer would not have been tuberculosis. Answer would have been then it's an inflammatory cause. Mm. Moreover, what I feel is that in your initial description, it was lacking. It was not explaining all the diagnosis. Because when you just sent this lymph node, then immediately you started telling about other lymph nodes and you forgot the whole system examination. If I would have to present this phase, I would say it's a 25 years old, unmarried, uh, college, university student. He presented with bilaterally enlarged cervical lymph nodes. Right? These lymph nodes are met together, they are not tender, and the interior cervical chain is enlarged. And on the left side, submed, for example, submedular lymph nodes are enlarged. Mm. Apart from that, there is no other evidence of lymphadenopathy. Instead of saying, I examined the axilla, it was negative, I examined the angle node, it was negative, I, no. This is mm. an undergraduate way of describing it. There was no evidence of lymphadenopathy in the body. And you rightly said, spleen is not enlarged, liver is enlarged. That means you are thinking about lymphoma. But the next sentence would be, on systemic evaluation, this patient has no comorbidity. Mm. There is no clinical evidence of involvement of any systemic disease. There is no previous history of any operation, any medical intake, and there is no other significant history apart from that. Mm. And then, of course, examiner will ask you, okay, how will you proceed forward? Mm. Then he will ask, how will you do investigations? Then he can just talk about investigations. Then he will just put different scenarios as examiner for trying it. And if you successfully manage it, right? If you would have been stuck at tuberculosis, the examiner would have asked from you, okay, what is called cholesterol abscess, what is cold abscess, mm -hmm. right? He could just further ask about the differential diagnosis and uh, can talk about metastasis, from where the metastasis will come. For example, the lymph this uh, we know this is a case of tuberculosis, mm -hmm. but for example, if it would have come out as a malignancy. Then from where it could come, you could say it could come from tongue, it can come from the pharynx, yes, how will you proceed forward and then you will tell all the investigations related to that. Right. So I hope you will just uh, work it on, on your presentation, but there are good things, you were confident, you actually covered everything, but these small bits are those things which actually make you a very good postgraduate presenter. Right. So thank you very much for your thank you.